Hello YouTube Sidekick here and today I'm in my trusty SU-25T which as most of you probably know is the very first aircraft you're likely to fly when you fly in DCS because it's the one that comes with the game. So this video was originally supposed to be just a test flight of the mission that we're making in my mission editor tutorial series called It's Not You, It's ME. Um, but then I decided that it actually might make a pretty decent tutorial um, of the SU-25T, and it ended up being a fairly long video. So I decided maybe I would um, just make it stand alone. So um, we're in the SU-25T, and we're flying the randomized target mission. And as I said, there's a whole video on how the mission was created and what we're supposed to be doing, and you should really go check it out here if you want to know. And if you want to fly the mission yourself, you can download it from my Discord server. The link is in the description. The uh, short version is that it's a mission where uh, we're just going to fly out of Mozdoc Air Base. We're going to fly to an area of operations, and a random target is going to appear, and we're going to attack it. The choices of random targets are a couple of M2 Bradley platoons, an M1 tank platoon, and also a couple of M109 uh, self-propelled artillery batteries. Our SU-25 is armed with two KH-25ML laser-guided missiles, some S-13 130mm rockets, and some 250kg iron bombs. So I will point out this is one change I made uh, that we'll talk about in the mission editor videos, but um, I actually have the KH-25 MLs instead of the S-24s that I thought we were going to use because I found in testing it that you really needed something that was a little bit more capable of taking on armored vehicles or it just wasn't that much fun. So uh, that's our loadout today and as you can see we're getting ourselves lined up here on the runway. Okay, we'll just get pulled around here and get stopped, pointed down the runway. We're going to drop the flaps and add a bunch of back trim. Really important to add that back trim when you're taking off in the SU-25T. And when we're ready, we're just going to throttle up and head down the runway. Now, as I said, this video started out life as simply a video to check the mission editing that we've been doing. But then I realized it was a pretty good sort of basic ground attack mission for the SU-25T. And Looking around on YouTube, there still aren't an awful lot of videos out there that are designed to help new players that are getting into DCS um, by showing them how to fly the SU-25T. And um, let's face it, the SU-25T is a bit of what my mother would have called uh, an acquired taste. And what she meant by that was that uh, that was usually what she said when she wanted me to eat food that I didn't like the taste of initially, uh, but she assumed that if I tried it often enough, I'd eventually get used to it. So. Now the SU-25T is a bit like that. So I thought I'd make a video that's aimed mostly at new players uh, experiencing the SU-25T for the first time. I know there's a lot of experienced guys out there who'll probably be watching the video as well. Um, please feel free to chime in in the comments if you have some other advice that would be helpful for the new guys. So we're experiencing our first little quirk of the SU-25T. Uh, when you first take off you'll find that it's pretty mushy. Uh, until it gets to about 400 kilometers an hour, it likes to doesn't like to go up very much. Uh, and you'll find that, especially after you get the flaps up, it has a real tendency to sink, even though the nose uh, is fairly high. Again, you just need to wait till you get up to about 400 kilometers an hour, and then it really starts to, uh, to climb. So the other thing you'll notice is that the uh, route following uh, indicator on the HUD is a little bit different than what you're used to if you're used to a waypoint following system. I did a whole description of this in an earlier video. Um, you should go check that out um, if you haven't flown uh, with this kind of uh, HUD before. Um, it does feel kind of weird and it does end up making you feel like you're chasing your tail a lot uh, until you get used to how it works. Uh, the basic idea is that it's trying to get you to follow a route, not to fly from waypoint to waypoint. And so it will uh, feel like it's overcorrecting because it's dragging you back onto your route rather than simply uh, telling you how to find the next waypoint. So again, uh, it's, if you're not used to it, it feels kind of weird, but it does make sense if you know what it's trying to do. Okay, so we basically are climbed out. We're coming close to our first uh, waypoint here, which is just at the end of the takeoff climb out. Uh, and there we go, the, the ball is moving, so we're going to follow it around. 
And this is going to take us to uh, our initial point where we're entering our area of operations and we're going to get a message saying that we have uh, targets that we can engage. So, as I said, I, I know that uh, if you're a new player in uh, DCS, the SC-25T can feel like a bit of a handful. Uh, part of the reason for that is that if you're coming from uh, flying Spitfires and ME-109s and things like that on a Warbird simulator, or if you're coming from a pure jet fighter simulator and flying F-16s, um, the SC-25T frankly flies like a bit of a brick. And that's because it really isn't the fighter. If you want to compare it to a World War II airplane, it's really more like an A-20 or a Bowfighter. It's a bomber. It's designed to be a stable platform to deliver uh, a lot of ordnance uh, accurately. Um, it's also, frankly, a little underpowered even for that job, so it can be a bit of a handful to fly. But that doesn't mean that it can't be effective, and it certainly doesn't mean that it can't be fun. So now you see we've got our message, so our uh, targets have appeared, although uh, we can't see them at this range. They're over in that area though. So we're going to fly due south and then uh, probably come down along that ridge until we find the target. Now, of course, because I designed the mission, I know roughly where to look, uh, but it's still, I don't, I, I have no idea actually which target has been uh, selected by the, by the mission uh, at this point. So that's kind of part of the challenge. But it is giving us an opportunity to enjoy the uh, really stunning DCS visuals. And if you're new to the game, uh, you won't know, but these have come an awful long way even in the last 12 months. Uh, sometimes I feel like I am actually flying in the Caucasus, particularly when I do this in virtual reality. So over there somewhere is either an M2 Bradley platoon, an M1 tank platoon, or an M109 artillery battery. Still not seeing anything over there yet. So we'll just keep looking until something shows up. And then once we've done that, we're going to have to uh, think a little bit about how we want to engage it with the weapons that we are carrying today. So as I said before, we have some guided missiles, some rockets, and some bombs, and that's kind of listing them in order of the standoff distance we can get with them. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll probably start with the missiles now. Let's see. Oh, 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 at that middle tree line on the far side, I saw a couple of white flashes, so I think we're in business. Uh, we know where the target is. And we're going to select the KH-25 MLs, and we're going to start with uh, a long run with the guided missiles. Yeah, they're in that far, in that middle tree line and it's the far cops of it. Okay, so this is one of the things that's a little bit different uh, in flying uh, a modern jet fighter with these kinds of standoff weapons uh, compared to particularly, say, uh, warbirds or, or even if you're used to flying a simulator where you're basically using iron bombs. Um, we're going to engage this target from a lot farther away um, than you would in any of those situations. And so that's one of the things that takes a bit of getting used to. You do need a fair bit of patience. You need to set this up. If you turn in too soon, there will just be too much to do in the cockpit to get it all done in time to launch the weapon. And that can get frustrating. I understand that. But uh, the thing about DCS is it's really the only flight simulator, at least that I'm aware of, where you're actually able to employ these kinds of weapons. So there, right in there is where they are. This isn't a great angle to approach this target from. I think I'm going to go around and on the second pass I'm going to come from the uh, other side so we're going up the slope instead of down. But also, uh, you know, where else and what other simulator you're going to get a view like that when you're flying. But anyways, so we're coming around, we're leaving ourselves lots of room because what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to roll in on the target, then we're going to have to turn on our television aiming system, we're going to have to find the target, then we're going to have to turn on the laser and let the laser designate it. Then we're going to fire the missile when it's within range. And then we're going to have to keep a lock on the target until the missile hits it. So there's a lot to do beyond just pressing the pickle button. So let's see how we do. We're rolling in here. And I'm 
I'm just going to wait until you see the dot. That's the television designator. I'm going to wait until that's close to being over the target, and then I'm going to look at the TV and try and see if I can pick up a target. Okay, so ground stabilize it, move it around. I'm hunting for it. Not doing a very good job here. Plane back. You got to fly the plane while you're flying the camera at the same time, which is exciting. Some days. In there somewhere. They're in there somewhere. And so this is one of the things that can be a little bit frustrating, I will admit. But it does work once you get... There you go. Now we're zooming in. Okay, I can see a vehicle. Okay, on a vehicle. Turn on the laser. And we're already in the launch window, so we fire the missile. And we just need to keep the, the target in front of us so the laser can guide to it. And I would call that shack. Okay, so we're going to break off to the right. But we're actually going to fly around to the other side because I think it's going to be easier to see those targets uh, if we're coming up the slope rather than going down the slope from behind them like we were there. So we'll just fly off to the left here and go around. So as you can see, yeah, that was a fairly busy little time uh, trying to get the... Um, trying to get all of those things done and I was having some trouble moving the, the camera. Um, I just need to get better with doing that. I haven't done it for a while. So uh, if you're not used to flying the aircraft, trying to do all of that at once uh, definitely takes a little bit of getting used to. But um, there's not very many things more satisfying in a flight simulator than watching uh, that uh, missile goes straight to the target. And again, there I don't really think there are very many simulators out there that give you the chance to do that. And that is really the thing that DCS provides that, that no other flight simulator can, is the ability to use some of these weapons that have come along in the last 20 or 25 years, um, because uh, it's really the only uh, competent flight sim out there that's, that's looking at uh, modern aircraft, at least as far as I know. If you know of other ones, uh, feel free to leave some, some uh, comments. Okay, so again, here's where we're having to learn a little bit of patience because we can, we need to go pretty far south um, if we want to give ourselves enough time to uh, go through that procedure again because we have another KH-25. There you can see it under the wing. So we need to give ourselves time to actually uh, go through that whole procedure again, hopefully maybe even a little bit more efficiently than we did the last time. So if you are someone who is uh, trying DCS for the first time, haven't uh, decided whether or not to invest in any of the, the paid aircraft, um, and you want to talk about flying the SU-25T and all of its little, uh, I don't know, perks and quirks, um, I'm always happy to have that discussion on my Discord server, happy to chat with anybody, and if I can help, I will, and, and there's a lot of other experienced DCS uh, pilots that uh, come to the Discord channel occasionally, and they've, uh, they've given me a lot of great advice over the last little while, and I'm sure they wouldn't mind helping out somebody else who's new if you want to come and ask for uh, some advice, or even if you just want to share uh, your experiences of how it's going, because... Um, it can be quite a feeling of accomplishment when you finally get this uh, all of this complexity marshaled and actually get it working. So it's nice to be able to share that with folks occasionally. Okay, we're coming around. Starting to just want to go across the base of the target here, but I think we're going to have a much better view of the target from this side. But as you can see, we've gone well south. We're giving ourselves lots of standoff. And again, this is, I think, one of the critical things to do when you're learning to use these standoff weapons. Give yourself lots of time, uh, especially if you're still learning to fly the airplane, trying to fly the airplane and fly the TV at the same time is a challenge, not gonna lie, but it's worth learning how to do well. So give yourself lots of time initially. Um, later on, you can shorten up the cycle and uh, some guys are even able to launch multiple missiles uh, on a run and that's pretty impressive, but for now, Let's just try and do this simply. So again, now we're going to ground stabilize the TV and we're going to go look for a target. And look for a target. Once we think we're in the area, then we're going to zoom in. Ah, there they are. Yes. Okay. And we'll just carefully 
We just need to get it over the target and then we'll be able to turn on the laser and it will lock to the target uh, so long as we're close. And a little bit of hunting. Okay, so turn on the laser, keep pointed more or less towards the target and it will lock. Uh, it's still hunting, it's still hunting. That's what now, there it's gone from flashing to steady. That means it's locked. And now you see the arrow moving down the left hand side of the hood has to be between those two broad bars. And we'll get something called Launch Authority or LA at the bottom of the screen. And that means it's time to launch. And it's time to launch. And there goes our missile. And again, we have to keep flying more or less towards the target until the missile has landed because it's depending on the laser. And there's another beautiful shot. All right. So those are the two guided missiles. And you can see that, well, we are getting a little bit of uh, enemy fire. I could have broken a little bit harder there to avoid that. But those uh, give us excellent standoff from the target. So the next uh, weapon we're going to use is going to be the unguided rockets. And we'll have to get a little bit closer to make those work. And we can turn off the TV because we won't be needing it uh, for these rockets. Um, so uh, I'm going to go around to the right. And we don't have to go quite so far south this time, although it's worth going far enough to give ourselves time after we roll in to get ourselves lined up. So we're just going around. Again, with the beautiful Caucasus Mountains in the background there. Okay, where'd they go? Where'd they go? Okay, there they are. For the smoke. Yeah, keep my eye on that. I don't want to lose that now. Yeah, we got a little bit of excitement here in that we have some scattered clouds. Uh, that are low enough that they're actually going to get between us and the target. That's also something new. If you're not familiar with DCS, the new cloud system really is very impressive. And uh, we're doing things like this. We're feeling like, um, you know, they're really adding some realism. This is this feels like this is what it would be like, uh, even on a pretty clear day. Occasional cloud gets in the way. Okay, there's the target, and there's the cloud moving into covered up. So we just need to remember where it is so we can keep setting up our roll in here. Okay, once it comes out of the clouds, we'll be almost there. Okay, so we roll in, we point the top of the aircraft, or the lift vector, at the target area, and we pull. And we roll out, there's the dot, which is our aiming reticle. But for now, until we get a little closer, once again, we need that arrow between the two broad bars. We're going to aim a little beyond the target. And then once we get launch authority, we put it over the target. Almost there. There we go. Get it over the target. And launch. And those are unguided rockets. Well, it looks like we hit all around the target, but it does not look like we actually hit the target. So, we'll have to go to... Uh, our final set of weapons, which are some uh, 250 kilogram or 500 pound iron bombs, completely unguided. Uh, but luckily the SU-25T is a great airplane for dropping these bombs and it has an excellent sighting system, so we can expect to be pretty accurate. So we'll go around to the left this time, make a slightly shorter turn this time, because we need don't need to be as far from the target. As I said, we're kind of going in decreasing order of standoff. We're we're launching the KH-25s from uh, a few nautical miles away. Uh, the rockets were from within a nautical mile or so, and the bombs were basically going to drop right over the target, which will bring us in the range of defensive fire. But uh, if we do this right, we should be able to get in and get out uh, without getting uh, any hits from those Bradleys. Okay, so we just need to uh, set up our drop here, make sure we're going to drop uh, all of the bombs. 
and a ripple, so we'll uh, cover the target target area. And once again, we're just going far enough south here to give ourselves time to line up on the target. There's the target area. Actually, even a little farther south than we need to be. I'm going to tighten it up a little bit here. I don't want to dive too shallow. Shallow dive is a good way uh, to get into the AAA because if you dive too shallow, you make, make yourself an easier target. So we're going to try and get a little bit closer into the target and make this a little bit more of a steeper dive. If you want to know anything about the fine art of dropping iron bombs, I do have a whole playlist called uh, The Iron Bomber's Guide to the DCS Galaxy that goes through the whole procedure of how to learn how to drop iron bombs. Uh, I also have a whole series of videos on learning to fly, fly the SU-25, uh, both the 25 base model and the 25T. Uh, and you can check those out on my channel. Um, there's a playlist called SU-25, the DCS Gateway Drug. Okay, once again, the clouds are helping. Helping obscure the target. Uh, right there. There's the smoke. There's where we want. We'll pull up a little bit tighter to it so we can get a good dive angle here. And roll in. Point the lift vector at the target. Pull up and start to roll out. Now we need to pick a target down there. Yeah, I think in that sort of light patch is where there's a target. And we're just going to put our, uh, our flight path a little bit beyond that. We've got the laser on, and then it will, when we get close enough, it will give us a bomb fall line, and that's the indication that we can actually drop the bombs. Okay, so we're getting almost there, almost there. Bomb fall line, pickle, gone, and pull away. It will break fairly hard, and look at that. Shack again with the iron bombs. All right, so let's, uh, I think we're done for the day. So let's break out of here uh, fairly aggressively to avoid the ground fire. And let's find our way back to Mozdoc. It looks like we didn't drop all of our bombs. I think it's because I didn't hold the pickle long enough. So we do have one bomb left, but we're just going to go home with it. Well, it looks like we uh, wrought a fair bit of destruction down there. Not a bad mission. So one thing you will find is that the aircraft definitely flies differently when uh, after you've dropped the ordnance. The, the flight models are very detailed and they do know if you're carrying the extra weight and also carrying the extra uh, aerodynamic drag. So uh, the plane now flies quite a bit differently now that not, we're not dragging around quite so much ordnance. And that's one thing to notice if you're learning to fly the SC-25T. You probably want to do a few test flights with it empty um, because its flight characteristics uh, are quite different when it's heavy. Okay, we're just setting ourselves up to um, to find the approach to Mozdok. It's going to take a little while to fly to the other side of the river. Got to lose some height and also lose a fair bit of speed. So we'll have to take a minute and get ourselves set up to do that. Once again, gives us a chance to enjoy the view, which uh, even on uh, the Caucasus map, which is certainly not the most visually stunning of the DCS maps, uh, is still quite impressive, especially with the new clouds. Speaking of new clouds, we're going down through the cloud layer here as we uh, are losing speed a little bit, but mostly just losing altitude right now as we uh, get off the end of the runway. And we'll start coming around here a little bit. There's... There's the runway over there. 
So hopefully if you're a new player to DCS, this has been a little bit helpful to show the kinds of things you can do with the SU25T, which of course is an absolutely free product that comes with the game. Um, you don't have to pay for it in money, but you do have to pay for it with a little bit of practice, actually, because uh, it isn't an easy aircraft to fly. Um, maybe that's delivered on the de developer's part because they uh, they uh, want you to, to believe that it's worth putting the time into practice and get good at flying not only this aircraft but other aircraft. But frankly, if you want to learn to fly in DCS, there are much better aircraft uh, as trainers, although they're not free. Um, there are also a lot of other free aircraft that you can uh, get a hold of uh, as downloadable content. In particular, I would say the A4 uh, and the A29B and even the T45 Goshawk, which is uh, just coming along, are also great aircraft um, that you can fly for free, that you can do a lot of really interesting things with. And you'll find some videos about that on my channel if you want to check it out. But the SU-25T, uh, straight out of the box, uh, is an airplane that you can do an awful lot with once you learn how to do it. So for experienced players who've stuck around this long in the video, thanks. Um, I realize that there's not a whole lot new. Nothing that I'm doing here is anything that a lot of you probably haven't done before. Although maybe it's been a while since you flew the SU-25T and you've forgotten just how much fun it can be. Uh, putting together this random target mission has really not been a lot of effort. Uh, but it's actually pretty pretty replayable. I've played it several times, uh, and even though there's only uh, five targets in the random set, uh, you know, it plays out differently, and it's giving me a chance to uh, get good at using all of the different weapons that the SU-25T, uh, all of the different kinds of weapons, uh, from the guided missiles to the uh, unguided rockets to the iron bomb. So it, it's actually kind of a fun little workout. Uh, we're going to keep working on the mission in my Mission Editor video series. Just getting the flaps down here. So I should also say that we are going to keep working on this mission in my Mission Editor uh, tutorial series. Um, there's quite a few other little features that we want to add to the mission, so do check out uh, that series of videos as well if you're interested in the Mission Editor. And again, for a new player, don't be afraid to do that. One of the real benefits of DCS is that it does have a, a pretty good Mission Editor. Again, a bit of an acquired taste, but once you learn how to use it, it lets you do things like this where you set up the practice the way you want to, um, which I think, especially um, when you're learning the game, is a real benefit. Um, the learning curve can be pretty steep, so the more of the variables that you can control yourself, um, I think the better. So we're getting the gear down and having to add a little bit more power. And the approach is looking not bad. So overall, I think the thing is that, uh, you know, any advice I'd give to somebody who's checking out DCS for the first time, um, it, you're probably finding it's it's not um, an easy thing to jump in the cockpit and just go ahead and fly. Um, maybe that's a little unfortunate, but maybe the thing is that it points out is that um, DCS is a simulator that really repays spending time and practicing. Um, and some of the things that you have to, you can learn how to do in DCS are not easy. Try landing on a carrier. Try doing air-to-air uh, -air refueling. Uh, these are not simple things, and they shouldn't be simple things. Um, and if you practice them and you get good at them, you should feel pretty good about um, the accomplishment. And I think that's one of the things that DCS provides you the opportunity to do. So I think it's worth the effort, obviously, or, or I wouldn't be flying uh, this jet right now, and I, I wouldn't be making these videos. Uh, but I do have to admit that it does take a bit of practice and a bit of work, and. Uh, that can be frustrating when you just want to go fly. So hopefully uh, this video has helped a little. As I said, if you'd like to drop by the Discord channel and talk about DCS, happy to chat anytime. All right, here we are in final, and as per usual, I'm displaying my rightest tendencies. Uh, even when I got my private pilot's license, I could never get on the middle of the runway. It drove my flight instructor crazy. And we're a little bit low. But if we add enough power and keep the nose up, we probably will make the threshold here. And we're down. Yeah, so proof positive that the SU-25T takes a little bit of work to master. And now I've forgotten what button I have bound to my parachute. And one of the other aspects of the SU-25T is you do not want to try and stop it with the brakes, which is what I'm doing now. Let me see if I can find the parachute. Ah, there it is. That's better. 
Yeah, when you land the SU-25T, you definitely want to use the parachute to slow down, not the brakes. All right, well, we're down, we're safe, we're home. Uh, successful mission, a and I think uh, an entertaining one. I certainly enjoyed it, I hope you did too. If you enjoyed the video, please do subscribe to the channel, please like the video. Uh, tell your friends, especially if they're new DCS players and you think it might help them as well. I really would like to make DCS easier for new players to get into, and that's what I'm trying to do here. So, um, for now though, this is going to be Sidekick, signing off.